Isn't this frog cute? Well, you're wrong. It can kill you in about nine seconds. And these are the deadliest mobs in Minecraft, from evil to super villainous. Phantoms just got so much worse. And now not only are they annoying, but they're also dangerous too. Since now they don't just target players, they target livestock and villagers too. And as soon as they get by, they'll pick up their prey and then drop them from a high height. And unfortunately, we can't give our pigs a pair of feather falling boots. But possibly the most dangerous change yet is that they even have a rare chance to spawn on nights that you're well rested. So even if you're getting your full eight hours of sleep each night, these revamped phantoms might still be an issue. And those aren't the only phantoms that we'll have to worry about. Because while this might look like a phantom, there's one key difference. It's actually one of the new specter mobs that'll spawn in the end. And this time, instead of spawning due to insomnia, you'll find the specters naturally generating in the end like endermen. And because you're in the end, you're not gonna be able to hope for these burning in the sun when daylight comes. Instead, they'll just keep swooping down to attack you relentlessly. And believe me, nothing makes the end cities more difficult than having to deal with a couple of shulker bullets, only to get hit by one of these swooping down to attack you. Or worse is that you levitate up into the sky in their domain, and they'll deal with you there. But you won't be safer on the ground either, since now, next to the end cities, you're gonna find a couple of these purple golems that'll spawn as well. And unlike the other golems that we have in the game, these ones are notably hostile. And if you get too close, they'll just chuck you away. Kind of like a bad level in Super Mario Sunshine. Man, I'd recommend that once you get the elytra, use that to stay as far away from these things as possible. But that's not to say that the trip back to the end gateway is any safer. Since if you happen to come across one of these, you wanna stay as far away as possible. That being the chorus squid mod. And if you're unlucky enough to find one of these blending in with the other chorus plants, it might be too late. Since at that point, these mobs will just launch themselves through the air and try to attack you. If you see a zombie with a pickaxe, you should run away. And the reason for that is that this undead miner variant could be devastating to come across in the caves. For one, they don't burn in the sun, so good luck trying to escape one of these by running up to the surface. But adding on to that, there's also four different ranks of these different undead miners. Starting with stone, then iron, and then eventually building up to diamond. But you'll want to fight them, because if you're able to kill the rarest variant, in, you notice that they'll have unique loot that they can drop. Just watch out where they're swinging that pickaxe, okay? But more dangerous than the zombies that you'll find spawning in the caves happens when you go up to the swamps. And this new swampy variant of zombie can be devastating to come across. And you'll see as much when the swampy variant attacks you, or rather leaps at you, which is terrifying, but that's not even the worst of it. Since once it attacks you, it'll also apply blindness and poison effect. Or if it's the baby form, then it'll just explode right next to you. Either case is not ideal. Oh, and make sure to avoid the water. They move faster there too. But even then, this still isn't the deadliest zombie in the game. And we'll show how bad it can get later in the video. Because first, we gotta talk about the mummy. Now, think of this thing like a husk on steroids. And while there's only a rare chance of them spawning in the desert biomes, I still wouldn't like those odds. Since it only takes one hit from this mummy to get damaged by the hunger three effect. Which as you can see, just decimates your hunger bar. And as long as it's targeted on you, you might have a chance of spawning these other beetles as well. And those are the little ankle biters you'll have to look out for. But hey, at least when you kill it, you get gold, which has to be worth something, but not dealing with this. There's easier ways to get gold. Be careful going next to that shipwreck, since now this could just be home to the new zombie and skeleton variants of the shipwreck monsters. And all of those will spawn from the shipwreck's captain known as Deadbeard, which I gotta say is an apt title. And Deadbeard in particular is something of a mini boss in this game. Not only does he have a bunch of health and knockback resistance, but even when you do manage to get to low health, that's when things get risky. Since then, Deadbeard will take out a TNT barrel, and if you don't kill it in five seconds, it'll just explode and leave no drops for you to pick up. So if you see this, kill it fast. Otherwise, it was all for nothing. Do not let a zombie get too close to the lava, since now they'll have the chance to turn into a new burned mob. And now the thing's basically got fire aspect. Every time that it attacks you, it'll catch you on fire. But believe me, if it was bad enough when this thing touches lava, it gets even worse when it touches water. Since doing that will just turn it into its obsidian form. At that point, it's immune to projectiles and resistant to fall damage. Oh, not to mention it also hits harder and takes less knockback, in case it didn't feel lucky enough. But if you manage to kill one of its variants, you will get this new kind of rotten flesh, which is actually useful. You can use it as a furnace fuel. Just be careful eating it. We could also catch you on fire. This mob is extremely rare, but if you see it, don't feel lucky. Since even though there's only a small chance of this generating during thunderstorms, this new monster called the Immortal is a deadly opponent. For one, all of his attacks can cause a lightning strike. And then he also has the chance to buff up other zombies around him into more powerful variants. Plus, the closer you get to killing him, the faster he gets. So good luck with that. But despite his name, if you actually do manage to kill the immortal mob, you'll have a 100% chance to drop a trident. But with how difficult that fight was, I would rather just take my lower chances on killing a couple of drowned mobs. This is the deadliest Minecraft mob that you've never fought. And the reason is that even 
though the Illusioner mob exists in the game's code, it's never been properly implemented until today. And now you can find some of these mobs spawning at the later parts of a raid. Now, like the Evoker, this mob's capable of using spells, but it's also got a bow, which it can fire off even quicker than we can. Not to mention that when you hit it, this thing will teleport away, turn invisible, and then summon other illusions to distract you. It's a confusing fight, to say the least. And honestly, I don't know if I prefer this over it actually never being implemented. It's a lot tougher this way, that's for one. And the Illusioner isn't the only forgotten mob that's back, since we now also have the Isolager to worry about. Even though it got rejected in mob vote 2020, now it's something we gotta deal with. Then when you do, you'll find that this mob is able to give you a freezing effect similar to the powdered snow. But if freezing to death wasn't bad enough, it can also summon these huge ice chunks above your head. And if you can't move out of the way to dodge them, then that's gonna be a rough crash. Though if you don't have soak touch, you can always kill a couple of these mobs and get yourself some blue ice. Which is a lot quicker than having to mine the 81 ice to craft one of these otherwise. And our final forgotten mob comes in with the toughest yet, the wildfire. Or as it was called back in the mob vote of 2017, the hovering inferno. Now this looks like a blaze, but you wouldn't want to get the two confused, since this is a much more deadly opponent to come across. And you'll see as much when you get hit by its fireball wave attack, which might I also add only gets stronger the less health it has. But these are worth fighting, not only for the blaze rods they drop, but also that it has a small chance to drop its own inferno helmet, which when you wear it, that'll give you extra protection against fire damage. You'll just have to sustain a lot of fire damage to get it. Here's why you should be thankful skeletons use bows and not swords, since these new grave metal skeletons can be incredibly deadly. And what's grave metal? Well, it's a new material that adds an armor defense that's only slightly less than diamonds, which already makes them tough to kill. But that gets even more dangerous considering that they can also use grave metal for their melee weapons. So why even bother with them? Well, if you kill them, they'll have a chance of dropping some part of the grave metal to use. And once we smelt that, we're able to get ourselves an ingot to make our own, which finally gives us an alternative to regular iron farms. You're just gonna have to work for it. These frogs might look cute, but that's how they get you. Since the truth is that these are actually the poison dart frogs that you'll have to look out for. And by just touching one of these new frogs, you could wind up with a number of different potion effects. Like the red one, which makes it so that you can't heal anymore. Not even with potions or golden apples. But even with that, the most dangerous has to be this yellow one. And why is that? All right, we'll make a deal. You punch that subscribe button, I'll punch the frog. Ready? Go. Because uh, as you can see, this one will give you the deadliest poison effect in the game, which is maybe more of a reason why you shouldn't go around punching frogs in case you needed one. Zombified piglins just got even worse, since if they happen to spend too much time in the nether, they could end up as this burning piglet. And unlike the other zombified variants, this one will actually start out as aggressive towards the player. And they don't just hate us, they also hate striders too. Which I mean, come on, how can you hate those things? And if you let it get too close, when it attacks you, it'll light you on fire. But while it's bad when we catch on fire, it's even worse if you let this thing get next to it. Since for just swimming in lava for 15 seconds, this piglin will get even more powerful. And considering the only unique loot you get for killing this is a couple of netherrack blocks, I'd just as soon keep my distance. And it's not just the undead piglins we have to look out for. Since with the new piglin alchemist, we're also gonna have troubles when we go next to a bastion. And while this piglin by itself isn't anything too scary, what's dangerous is when you let it get too close to the other piglins. Since this mob has the chance to throw out splash potions to heal them, and also give them a strength buff as well. So if you see one of these in the bastion remnant, you should focus it first. Otherwise, it'll be a lot harder to do the rest of your raid. Think of these like the healing crystals in the end. Take them out first. This wandering trader might look innocent, but that's how they get you. Since if you open up a trade with this villager and see this at the top of your screen, you have to make a split second decision. Either you make a rotten trade to keep it peaceful, or you don't buy anything at all, in which case it's gonna get pretty mad. And that's when it reveals itself to be the evil wandering trader variant. And even its llamas become skeletal and evil as well. And every time that you're attacked by the traitorous trader, they'll steal your items right from your inventory. And the only way to get them back is from his llama's chests. So make sure to chase after them first. Don't kill cows at night, since if you do, you run the risk of them turning into zombified versions of themselves. Because of this change, any passive vanilla mobs that you'll kill will turn into a zombified version of themselves if you kill them at night. And they're not just gonna attack you, they'll also attack other animals and villagers too. And take note, because some of them have unique effects as well. For example, the llamas will now spit poison at you, and the dolphins are able to drown you if you get too close. But easily the most dangerous happens if you kill a pig, since accidentally hitting one of these with your fire aspect sword will just cause it to explode if it's lit on fire. So just save your animal killing until the sun goes up. That way you're at least a little safe. See the creeper? Well, if you can't, that's kind of the point. Since now, creepers have the scary ability to blend into their environment, making them much scarier to come across in the caves. And folks, there isn't just a few blocks that they can turn into. The amount of compatibility that this adds in is shocking to say the least, even giving them the ability to blend in with leaves, cobwebs, and glass. And that last one's the scariest, let me tell you that. But given the fact that creepers used to blend in with the alpha grass texture, who knows, maybe this is more intentional. And to me, that's even scarier. When not just still working on the game, he originally planned for spiders to be able to spread webs. but that 
that was mentioned all the way back in 2009, and obviously it never made it into the game, until now. And with this, both spiders and their cave spider variants are able to produce webs in the players nearby. And that not only makes these a lot more annoying to deal with, but it also makes it a lot more annoying to clean up after you've killed them. So just remember that if you use a water bucket, you're able to easily get rid of cobwebs like this. Believe me, that's a lifesaver when you have to deal with it. What's worse than a creeper exploding? Well, apparently it's the opposite. Since if you get too close to this creeper and let it explode, then that explosion will cause the blocks within range to flip upside down, which is somehow even worse for your builds. And now instead of just having to patch up a creeper hole, you'll instead have to tear down all this inverted mess, which is annoying to deal with, but that might just open up the perfect opportunity for a prank. Depends on how evil you are, I guess. What if I told you that there's no more passive mobs? Now, don't get me wrong, chickens, cows, and pigs are still in the game, but they sure aren't passive. Since now, these mobs that we thought of as being peaceful are actually gonna fight back, which makes it a lot more annoying to farm these mobs than it ever has been before. But with how much trouble we put villagers through in the past, I honestly can't blame them for evening the scores. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?